This is a project that I am deeply passionate about. I strongly believe the technology you are about to witness is needed now more than ever in our society. For 25 years, the powers that be have blocked this technology through intimidation, lawsuits, and government interference. For example, an ad was placed in USA Today on September 17, 1999 that read, Tired of high electric bills? How about no electric bills? In an effort to gain support for this project. Dennis Lee, the CEO behind this project, was contacted by both Rockefeller and Rothschild interests and was sternly informed that he would never get, get the support of the people. They were right, and that is still a fact today. I can imagine that you're no stranger to government interference and have been persecuted in some way for your own interest in helping people. But I also know that will is stronger than fear, and ideas for helping the greater good cannot be suppressed forever. I believe that innovative technology, like the technology featured in this presentation, are the tools that we as a society can use to break the stranglehold of the controlling elite. I am reminded of my favorite movie series, The Matrix. At the end of the movie, the people triumph over their machine masters, but they are forced underground before they win. It is my belief that we can achieve victory without going into hiding. I feel that support from people like you and organizations like the Global Information Network will help create momentum for this project. I believe this technology cannot be suppressed. It's only a matter of time. I appreciate your willingness to invest a few minutes of your time in reviewing the following presentation. I hope that you are inspired by it and that you see the value that exists in such technology. I welcome any and all feedback that you may have and I encourage you to share this information with others who may have an interest in a technology like this that has the potential to make such a profound difference. is 100% efficient. So nationwide, we proved that the Hummingbird motor won in electrical, more than that in from uh, permanent magnets, five minutes out. We proved that nationwide. Then we came with the generator and we proved it was a 100% efficient generator. So 100% efficient generator. Neither one of these things have ever been done by anyone else officially before. We've not taken them to test labs. We don't intend to. We took them to the people. We did it in open conferences, public hearings, because it's very difficult for anybody to do any dirty tricks in that setting. That's the reason why we chose that venue. And we are signing people up now uh, to help us by coming and witnessing. The Wright brothers flew. Uh, for the very first time at Kitty Hawk because the President of the United States, uh, uh, a President of the United States uh, ordered the Kitty Hawk affair and uh, uh, the people came to that and because of the public awareness it happened. Uh, we do not believe that we can get a fair shake with uh, uh, universities and scientists coming and checking our stuff out. We wish to do all of our demonstrations live before large segments of the public uh, and so we are enlisting the public to get involved with us their reward is for them coming out and helping us we will then give them all their power for free you can check it out check out the promotional end of this if you wish to but we demonstrated now there's also another videotape uh, where we had a private conference with our dealers. We put the Hummingbird uh, motor, this is a 50 horsepower Hummingbird motor, onto the generator, but we did not turn it on. We did this for a photo op that has never been run together. But you will see some footage of the generator going and you'll see that it's a low RPM electric generator. You'll be shocked by what you see there. 
The uh, uh, faster it goes, the more electricity it produces. You'll see some footage on that. You'll also see how lightweight and small in comparison to a 40 horsepower motor this is. I pick it up with my own arms like this. You can't do that with a 50 horsepower motor. You need a crane to lift a 50 horsepower motor. You'll see that footage in here to make that illustration. You'll also see that this is a variable speed. You can go faster or slower with this. You'll see that with a foot feed where you can go faster or slower. And obviously, you probably came to the conclusion that maybe you could even use something like this uh, to drive a car. And on this footage, at the end of this videotape, you're going to see we have a 150 horsepower electric motor that is set to go in a car as an engine for a car that will run on the same drivetrain. And you would go faster or slower with the foot feed. You'll also see how that can be controlled. This hummingbird process can be controlled with a foot feed. So uh, you got some interesting things to see. Uh, you also will not see on this tape another technology that we do have it's the subject of another videotape itself, and that is a technology called the Tornado Engine. This right here is a Tornado Engine. It weighs 175 pounds. It's smaller than a Volkswagen engine. It creates a tornado on the inside, uses the turbine blades to get incredible amounts of torque right out here on the shaft. Uh, as a matter of fact, this baby right here, 175 pounds, you won't believe this, but I'll tell you anyway, will produce 5,000 horsepower using nothing but water vapors. It rips the molecules out of water vapors and burns them. It's called the tornado engine. This is something that we have in the back room that we intend maybe at some later date to pull out uh, for commercial applications for electricity. Uh, we can make that little hummingbird or that little Sundance generator instead of 32 inches square We can make it eight feet by eight feet if we did that it would produce 500 uh, Kilowatts of electricity 500 and so it would be a uh, Half a megawatt so one half a million watts per hour. So half a megawatt um, and this right here would drive it. So we can get enough power from this using water vapors to power a half a megawatt. Imagine one of these on one side, an eight foot by eight foot block generator in the middle, another eight foot by eight foot block generator, and another one of these uh, tornadoes on the other end. Tornado, generator, generator, tornado. That whole package would fit on an eight foot box trailer and it would be a whole megawatt of electricity. So if you think what you've heard so far is crazy, enjoy yourself, watch the videotapes, please take the time, see it for yourself, and understand that every piece of footage that you are looking at was seen by thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of people all across the United States in multiple settings in every state of the country pretty much. With Scientists being invited with full page uh, challenges to come and measure. And so, bon appetit. I'll let you watch the videotapes and you can see for yourself. Okay, now this is the 50 horsepower here. Now this just got bounced 2,000 miles and Ron just came in. There we go. this 50 horsepower motor right here same size that would be the driver just as efficient as the one we just tested that one was set up to test exactly the same technology and so over there you were seeing this input to output over here that was incredible you would have that technology connected to that um, generator and so here you are and you can vary it Ron can show you right here that if you even wanted to do something exotic like put this onto a car, he can show you how effective this could be.
That's the foot feet. Now he went for it. But the nice part about it is, it behaves like a regular gasoline engine. That's what I tried to do, is to duplicate it so that it would behave so that the little old lady from Pasadena wouldn't have to go to school to learn how to drive an electric car. Well, it, it, it drives just like a regular gasoline car. Just step on it and go. Thanks a lot, Ron. It's never been demonstrated for a crowd, and we're going to demonstrate it tonight, and we are going to prove to you now that we have the most efficient generator that has ever been built in the history of the world. Not only do we have the most efficient generator, we also have the best design generator that's ever been designed. I'll tell you why. If you have a generator right now, and you run the generator, and the generator breaks, what do you do with it? Throw it away. That's it. You just throw it away. Because you can't do anything else. You can't repair it. Now, you could send it back to the factory. They could rewind it. But if it was worth a lot of money, you might. But if it's not worth a whole lot of money, then you just throw it away. Now, this right here, this generator, is designed in a very unique manner. You notice all these modules. These are all separate, independent modules. Now, these modules are that very unique material in a U-shape. On this side of the U, you have a, co a coil. On this side of the U, you have another coil. This coil, as the, as the magnets come around, makes electricity. This one makes electricity as they come around as well. So the core material is transferring the power from the windings. Now, each one of these modules produces one kilowatt of electricity. So this module, independent of this module and that module, this one makes one kilowatt hour. Now what happens then is, if you look here, while it's running, if there was a little LED light up here, that's the way it would be designed, there's an LED light up here, when this one breaks a core or a coil, the LED light goes out and it says this is no longer making the one kW. There will be a quick disconnect at your house you pull that one out, pick up another one, stick it right back in, just like you change a fuse at your home, and now it wasn't making any electricity, and then you pop a brand new one in while it's running. You don't even shut it down, and now it's making a kilowatt of electricity again. Now, if you count these, we'll start right there with the writing as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So there's 15 of these modules. If each one of them make a kilowatt of electricity, how much electricity will that make? 15 kilowatts. If you go around to the back of the machine, there are 15 more in the back. So it's like this. Cores and coils like this, facing one another, with the magnets going through, producing the electricity. So you're making 15 on this side, 15 on that side. How many kilowatts will the whole thing make? 30 kilowatts. So we said we were going to bring to your house a 30 kW generator. This is what it would be like. Now, in that, if you're, if you're running along and the LED light goes on, then you're making 29 kilowatts because this one's out. When you pop it out, you're still making 29 kilowatts. When you pop another one in, you're now making 30 again. You tell me that there's a better design generator anywhere in the world, or that there's a more serviceable or easy to repair generator that's ever been built in the history of generator manufacturing. Now, our Hummingbird motor is designed to set right up here. Tonight I will show you why we never put the Hummingbird in the same room with the Sundance. We don't want to give them too big a target. So, but the Hummingbird motor would sit right here. That would drive this, and it's about that big. That's it. That would be it. Now, this is made out of G10. The unit will come to you made out of G10. G10 is a material that will last for over 100 years. How long will this generator last? 
over a hundred years. So, now that you have seen some of the technology that can change our world for the better, what can we do about it? Here is a plan that will work. We are looking for $10 million to fund 116 stadium-sized demonstrations all throughout North America, two in each of the 50 United States and 16 throughout the Canadian oh, provinces. At the end of our tour in 19... And in uh, 1996, this is a gold engraved invitation. We sent it to all the members of the Congress of the United States, a cordial invitation to please attend a ball that we were holding at the end of this tour. Here is a, it says uh, you know, RSVP, respond by January, uh, by February 26, 1996. It was announcing a show to happen on March the 5th, 1996. Now, at this show that we set up for the Congress of the United States, we invited 1,400 government officials from the federal government. Very unique way for scamsters to act. We invited Janet Reno, we invited the president, we invited every senator, we invited every member of the House of Representatives, we invited all federal employees in Washington, D.C. to come to this show, to see what? To see that we have technologies and that we were developing further technologies that could completely eliminate the need for fossil fuel pollution in production of electrical energy. That's what we wanted to show our government. We wanted to make it clear to them that we were going to advance this no matter what happened. We showed them lots of technologies, technologies that would prove that we could win a war with the electric utilities companies. Were they to resist us in this? We said, good news, we're Americans, we love our country, we don't want to collapse the infrastructure of the United States, we're coming in a friendly way, would you please deregulate the electric utilities, give anyone access to the electric utilities grid. Anybody that wants access, private producers, independent private producers, would have access to the utilities grid. We were contacted by the Energy Commission for the Congress, and they asked what we wanted, and I said, we want you to deregulate the electric utilities. And I gave them, in a long, to make a long story short, I gave them until July of 1996 to do that. Or, quote unquote, I do get a little brash. We were going to go do it for them. Uh, they never met with us in private session. Uh, they probably would not acknowledge that we had anything whatsoever to do with this, but I find the timing to be quite in interesting. We gave them a 12-point plan for deregulating the electric utilities and, and, and gave them a deadline of July of 1996 to do it. And by the way, the deregulation that the Congress of the United States passed looks pretty familiar to me. And it happened on July 19th, 1996. Coincidence? Possibly coincidence. I took it as a sign that the government was willing to work with us, and I've been trying to work with them ever since. The second tour that we did, we went out and we built our units and tried to put some technologies together. Finally, in 1999, we felt very comfortable with the technologies that we have right now. A combination of a motor called the Hummingbird motor that, comp that utilizes the concept of uh, magnetic energy. It's a permanent magnet motor. We took it on tour in uh, 1999. We ran an ad, a full page ad, in USA Today newspaper announcing this tour in 1999. This is the paper, USA Today, September, I think, 15th or 17th, September 17th. We went on tour. This is the September 17th paper. This is a full page excerpt from that paper.
Here's a blow up of that same excerpt. So we ran a full page ad in USA Today. And in this ad it said, tired of high electric bills, how about no electric bills? And we're talking about bringing a technology that will show them amazing things. Far more energy out of a electrical device than is going in in the form of electricity. Now we're not talking about more energy out of a mechanical device than is going in. We're talking about more energy out of an electrical device than the amount of electricity that's going in. But there is another source of energy besides electricity, and that would be the magnetic energy. Okay, now, so right here we're explaining that, and if you close up right here on this sentence, America's Declaration of Energy Independence, it says, bring your own test meters and measure the devices for yourself. So it's an invitation to all skeptics, to all engineers, to all scientists in America. And here are the places where we did shows, 47 locations in the United States. We did 47 shows in 32 states nationwide. We gave all the scientists in the country a full page ad inviting them to come bring their measurements, their, their instruments and measure. Now we're going to show you excerpts of that videotape and you're going to see in these excerpts of a show that we did on the road, and we did allow everybody to come on stage and make sure that our instruments were correct and make the measurements for themselves. Nationwide, oh, thousands of people came up on stage, thousands of people measured this, and their measurements were always, always proved that our measurements were accurate. So we did this show, we're going to show you an excerpt from it. We showed a permanent magnet motor. You put one unit of energy in from the batteries, you get five units of mechanical energy out of it. Horsepower, drive, mechanical energy. One electrical from a set of batteries, five units of horsepower or energy coming out of it. And by the way, there has to be another source of energy because you can't put one into a mechanical device and get five out. There has to be another source of energy. That other source of energy was the permanent magnets that we have in our motor. That was the source of energy. So far more energy was coming from the magnets in that motor than were coming from the electricity to just manipulate it in the proper manner. Now, so we did that, we proved the Hummingbird motor nationwide, gave all the scientists in this country an opportunity to prove us wrong. Then we went on another tour, yet another tour, and the next tour that we took was in the year 2001. That was just last year. So just last year we went on national tour again. This time we ran, once again, a full page notice in Newsweek Magazine. Newsweek Magazine, here's my mug standing next to a Sundance uh, generator and a Hummingbird motor. We did indeed show all of this stuff. Uh, we proved that you can run an engine without any exhaust whatsoever. And Lots of other technical things that we did indeed prove, but we demonstrated the Hummingbird, the Sundance generator. We did not bring the Hummingbird motor with us. So we will show you an excerpt from that show next. So first the Hummingbird show, showing that we did indeed get five units out for, of mechanical energy for every one unit of electrical energy. And obviously there was more than five going into that unit, but only one from the batteries. The other five, or maybe six, were coming from the magnets themselves for an output of only five. Okay, if you do the math, it says in that footage uh, four out, but it was a quick, hasty uh, illustration. But if you do the math, it was five out for one end. Now, so on this next film that we have, the footage is the Sundance Generator. We put the Sundance generator in front of uh, an audience in every state of the United States. We advertised here. We were coming to every single, all 50 states, every single state. You could uh, go to the internet to find the location in the state that you're from. 
It was a challenge to all technical people once again in September. Challenge to all technical people to come out and prove us wrong. We demonstrated and measured a 100% efficient electric generator. That, by the way, has never been done before in the history of the country. Now, if you've got... We are looking for 10 like-minded, sophisticated investors to take us up on the following challenge. Each investor would put in $1 million for a total of $10 million, in complete confidence as preferred. These 10 investors will acquire co-partnership of one dealership in which they will be entitled to promote, sell, and manufacture all of the products, up to 500, that Better World Technologies now owns, plus all future endeavors. We would then produce a promotional campaign to gather attendees for the demonstrations. Right now we have an existing database of about 700,000 people who are pre-registered for attendance. Our goal is to reach 1.6 million attendees total for the demonstration events. This could ultimately produce 16 million home units in operation, which would supply all of North America with 100% of its electrical energy needs. The good news. Now that millions of people have seen this amazing technology demonstrated, the good news will spread rapidly and virally. The initial homeowners will receive their generator and its installation at no cost. And as the great news continues to spread, we will subsequently sell the registrations, including installation, at the $2,000 suggested retail price. Imagine 1 million new registrations. Each investor would be entitled to 900,000 or more registrations after the demonstrations are done. With a retail price of $2,000, one half of that would go to International Tesla Electric, ITEC, with $1,000 received as profit. That is $1.8 billion of profit from registration sales with a $900 million total return on investment and $900 million for ITEC. Investor Benefits $10 million is necessary to perform the demonstrations. Each $1 million invested returns 100,000 registrations to be placed free to friends, family, or associates prior to demonstrations. 900,000 registered participants per unit at $1,000 equals $900 million after demonstrations. Investor, the following. Homeowner benefits, a lifetime of free electricity valued at up to $1,300 a year at wholesale pricing, and the benefit of aligning with a company providing clean energy solutions. So if money talks, let's talk money. $29.6 billion for power generation minus $4.5 billion for the cost of the units equals $25.1 billion. $25.1 billion plus $900,000 from the retail sales of registrations from the first year equals $26 billion profit in five years per each investor.